Okay, welcome to everyone who's online with us. We are um, doing potpourri this morning for the holidays, so there's no assigned reading. So, this is um, from a chapter we haven't done yet, so probably a good thing since we just did lymphoid infiltrates. Um, Nicole, you want to? Sure. Um, so it definitely looks lymphoid. Um, looks like we're <laughs> deep because um, you've got a big vessel near the one edge and then muscle fibers um, yeah. on the other side. And is the vessel normal or is there a bluish? No, it's got a bluish tint to it, either fibrinogen or like intimal thickening. And fibrinogen is... Um, so fibrinogen, you're, you are correct, can be baby blue. This um, looks almost mixoid blue. Um, any kind of nodular lymphoid infiltrate that you know that forms around this kind of traumatized odd vessel that often has hobnailed endothelium and that bluish discoloration? Retroauricular. If we looked higher, there'd be EOs in with the. I see that hobnailing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so thinking like a like a pseudo. Yeah. Type so of think, and it's you know we were solidly in lymphomas yesterday, yeah. which is why if you weren't coming from that background, I think you'd nail it. Um, but. You know, the reason this one's good is it hits your eye as a lymphoid mm -hmm. infiltrate. The vessel is key. So what would be retroauricular, big vessel, lymphoid with EOs? Angel yes. ALHE, angiolymphoid lymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophilia, which is often a, you know, massive lymphoid infiltrate, but it's all secondary essentially to an arteriovenous malformation. So you see that vessel in the center um, here, um, it's so traumatized that we're not getting a good look at the endothelium. But the hobnail endothelium and the bluish discoloration to the vessel are very characteristic and often helpful. Do you think inflammatory or neoplastic? <laughs> neoplastic, well done. Okay. And nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. You know, they're spindle cells, so it's a little different from what we normally mm -hmm. look nice. at. Yeah, nuclei are pretty large. It's, you know, very blue suggests it's mainly nucleus. Lots of mitoses. Um, spindle cell and spindle cell and fascicles. So if it were a cutaneous <coughs> spindle cell tumor slammed up against the epidermis, what would be your differential? So explain why why does have, I mean, and then atypical fibers on film. And melanoma, correct. So they conveniently um, spell SLAM. This one actually is a melanoma. Is a spindle cell melanoma, kind of a ridge pattern. I don't think you could get there very easily without immunostains, but it um, certainly, um, you know, if you're in skin and thinking of spindle cell malignant neoplasms, you just kind of run down the list and it would 
and we'd get you there. <coughs> okay. Looks like most of the actions in the sub Q. So most of it's in the sub Q, mm -hmm. and what do you think? Fat necrosis, um, sort of a mixed infiltrate. Yeah, so fat necrosis, mixed infiltrate, and then what's this change on the. Like, in, frost, on the like frost on a window pane, so lipomembranous change. So what kind of things do you see that in? Like lipodermatosclerosis, which is the most likely. You know, that's basically ischemic fat necrosis in, associated with stasis. Um, you can also see it in other things like lupus paniculitis. Um, but, you know, given that there's fat necrosis and lipomembranous change, lipodermatosclerosis would be probably top of your, top of your list. Poroma, so small polygonal cells about the size of acrosyringeal cells or the cells of a seborrheic keratosis. Differs from a seb in that it hangs down off of the epidermis and it has these tiny little white ducts in it, little white circular ducts. Cytoplasm is visible, so although there are lots of nuclei, it's surrounded by pink as opposed to the things like spiratinomas that don't have any pink. Neutrophils and para seem to be alternating. Mm -hmm. Newts on top of para, newts on top of para, newts on top of para. Mm -hmm. So you would think about psoriasis, you would think <coughs> about tinea. So, and so, um, so <coughs> newts in the horn, what's your full differential? P ticks. Which is? Psoriasis, tinea, hepatigo, kenda, yes, subderm. And syphilis. syphilis. So psoriasis, tinea, impetigo, candida, subderm, syphilis, p -tics. When they're alternating like this, newts on top of para, it's pretty much diagnostic psoriasis. Okay. Did you know what PRP was alternating, or there weren't like, <coughs> I mean, there wasn't a follicle to plug in the there, but. Um, PRP, you get checkerboard parakeratosis, but no newts. No newts. No neutrophils. Okay. So it looks like I kind of have some. I was going to say, like, necrosis. This is a hibernoma. Okay, so hibernoma, really what makes it a hibernoma? Just like the, um, I guess just the appearance of the fat with the <coughs> vessels interspersed throughout. Okay, what about the fat makes it a hibernoma? Um, it just looks almost like granular appearing, although it's, it may not actually be granules, but it, it kind of has that... I don't know how to describe like speckled appearance. Okay, so um, foamy. So it's brown fat has um, many small lipid vacuoles within it and typically a central nucleus. A few of these are scalloped, which is actually unusual. Hibernomas typically have a distinctly round nucleus. Like yeah. that's a distinctly round nucleus and visible 
vacuoles, lipid vacuoles within the cytoplasm. So, correct. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably that was sick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, David, what do you think? See biopsy of compact corneum, dilated, not a spacious glands work on glabrous or hair bearing skin. Okay, the dermis looks a little busy. Um, So you, you go away from it, and you have neither the sebaceous glands nor the busy dermis. So yes. that's the lesion, a busy dermis with sebaceous glands sitting on top of them. Um, hmm. I was thinking scar, but that would be kind of the opposite of sebaceous glands. Um, I mean, you need the sebaceous, but it doesn't really fit the dermis. Um, what kind of a Busy, busy dermis lesion with, that synthesizes collagen would have induction of follicles or sebaceous okay, follicles of it. Dermatofibroma. Right. So dermatofibroma with the overlying sebaceous induction. So it looks almost like a reticulated, I'd say pink strands and blue buds. Reticulated pink strands, blue buds. What does that suggest to you? Um, infundibular cystic BCC. So infundibular cystic BCC radiates out with pink fingers that don't anastomose. What pink strand blue bud has anastomosing pink fingers? Pinkest tumor. A pinkest tumor, correct. So fiberepithelioma <laughs> of pinkus, the pink strands anastomose into a net-like pattern. In infundibular cystic, they radiate out in a finger-like pattern. I thought it was the grasshopper dev. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, grasshopper? The tumor of the follicular infundibulum? Oh, TFI. I see. So TFI has no blue buds. And doesn't anastomose. Hmm. Helpful points. <laughs> I think he's gonna mess you. I'm not sure though. We need someone to take over the comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So dilated pore, um, some hyperkeratosis. Think about dilated pore Weiner. Doesn't yeah. quite look like a pilar sheath acanthoma. So you said the words, it doesn't quite look like a pilar sheath acanthoma, and yet the fingers are kind of acanthotic. I guess it does more than <laughs> I thought. Yeah. So, you know, the two are kind of variants of the same thing. So, pore of Weiner, pilar sheath acanthoma. If the fingers are skinny, it's a pore of Weiner. If the fingers are fat, it's a pilar sheath acanthoma. Those were moderately fat fingers. <laughs> Okay, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, kind of off the epidermis here. It's pretty pale staining. So pretty pale staining, and then is it palisaded or not palisaded at the periphery? Um, it looks palisaded at the periphery. Yeah, so peripheral palisading, clear glycogenated pale cells hanging off the epidermis. Portions, you can make out a thick red glassy basement membrane zone. <coughs> like a, anyone want to jump in? <coughs> Trichilomoma. So Trichilomoma resembles outer root sheath where you have that vitreous membrane which is a thick glassy red basement membrane zone. Peripheral palisade, then clear glycogenated epithelium hanging off of the epidermis. Multiple trichilomomas associated with? Cowden's. Cowden's. What are the features of Cowden's? Uh, <laughs> 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 
Ah, uh, Reno Cell, personal. Uh, you're thinking of Bird Hog Bay uh, or Reed syndromes, which have that. Um, so Cowden's is bilateral aggressive metastasizing breast carcinoma, goiter, gut polyposis, variety of other cancers, but breast is the most common. So, um, you know, in the days before HIPAA, it was actually named for a patient, not a physician. Rachel Cowden died of aggressive metastasizing breast cancer, so had her mom, so had her aunts, so had all the women in her family. And she also had cobblestoning of the oral mucosa and gut polyposis. So Peyton Weary at UVA, um, at um, the Virginia Durham meeting said, this looks like a syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, Just think of the glands. Mm. That works. What was it? Cow <laughs> breast. <laughs> mm. yeah. So cow milk breast is the way to think of cow business to help you remember. P10, they have 10 others. It's not true. <laughs> so, very good. So, P10, 10 others, factually incorrect, but helpful mnemonic. Very good. How many others does it count on? Um, but you come up with, I believe, six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very I feel like good. you'd know that answer. Just why? Uh, <laughs> Not everyone from Nebraska knows how many others a cow has. His wife's family does cows. Yeah, we don't milk them. Let me fact check it. Okay. <laughs> this looks uh, something in that next world. Something um, at, at Nexa World, and you think likely pilar side or sweat gland side? Uh, I was thinking more sweat gland, it's kind of bluish. So, so there's actually little sweat droplets too, it looks like. Maybe. So things that suggest sweat gland side are ducts. Mm -hmm. Also, the sweat gland tumors never palisade. The pilar tumors always palisade at the periphery, right? So this has no palisading at the periphery, as opposed to the trichilomoma, which, like most pilar tumors, palisade beautifully. So sweat gland tumors never palisade, have duct differentiation. So where would you put this in the sweat gland? They kind of have the, uh, like a, the poroma category. Yeah, so poroma the category. Poroma. Acrospiroma. So, if it attaches to the epidermis like this, you call it a paroma. If it's little things in the dermis like that, you call it a dermal duct tumor. So what do you think about the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio? It did look a little busy and little so busy, nice. and you said the words it's blue, mm -hmm. right? Paromas are usually red, so when they turn blue, that suggests porocarcinoma. Yes, possibility of porocarcinoma. Hypercellular poromas need to be excised. <coughs> so it's deep in, in the sub Q, it's got a spindled, almost fascicle like pattern. Yep. So something that is spindled, fascicular. Uh, it's got some xanthoma-like cells in it. Yeah, it's got mm -hmm. lots of xanthoma cells. So what kind of spindle cell tumors do we see that have xanthoma cells? Um, I think you can get some in nodular fasciitis. Um, so you can see it in nodular fasciitis. You can see them in giant cell tumors, but there's no giant cells in those tumors. Plexiform xanthoma is another one that can do it. Rosei Dorfman. I see lymphoid nodules, but I don't see gray plasma cells. So they're kind of missing for Rosei Dorfman. Um, um, variants of dermatofibroma could do that. Um, as we look around, I'm not 
15 mini giant cells, mm -hmm. but if you added a few reef type giant cells to this, xanthogranulomas can be in that list too. <coughs> so I, I sort of go down immunostains looking for things like dermatofibroma, xanthogranuloma. Um, in the absence of any of those, plexiform xanthoma is probably your most likely. And are those usually associated with hyperlipidemia or not associated with hyperlipidemia? Not. Usually not, correct. you, at scan, talked yourself into it all being lymphoid, then you have vertical columns of lymphocytes and patchy perivascular lymphocytes would suggest a diagnosis <coughs> of? Of lupus. Of lupus, absolutely. But you also picked up on the fact that, that it's very dark at the junction, right? And what if these are all melanocytes and there's actually not a lymphocyte anywhere on the slide? Yeah. So if those are all melanocytes, then what is that pattern to you? Um, extends around oh. adnexal structures and okay. patchy perivascular so like and general. interstitial, like a congenital yeah. nevus. Exactly. <coughs> so melanoma is usually not patchy within the dermis, it's usually solid sheets. Whereas congenital nevi skip around, and what's characteristic is the patchy interstitial perivascular periatnexal distribution. So very good, congenital nevus, and you are not alone. It is very common for people to take a first look at those and go down a lymphoid path with that. But you picked up uh, what was on the junction, which was good. Good action. So you have this um, articulated looking uh, neoplasm, <coughs> sort of like some papillary fronds there, but I mean, you can just tell if that's processing. Uh, so papillary fronds, and do they connect to the outside or not connect to the outside? It looks like they connect to the outside. They connect, so that one could easily slide into it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So guess <laughs> <that> it is. <laughs> I guess. Like the top of an S-PAP. So this is that normal papillophron. Because the H-PAP you can hide in, whereas the S-PAP you can slide. Um, I mean, it looks like a sweat gland tumor, or... Well, so you're picking up on the ducts, mm -hmm. suggesting that it's a sweat gland tumor. Um, how would you describe the pattern? Um, reticular or reticulated. Uh, it's definitely reticulated. Mm -hmm. And what color are the strands? Oh uh, well, that strand you're pointing to is like pink. And That's the buds. Blue. The blue. So yeah, like a infundibular cystic basal cell. So is that reticulated, or does that have finger-like projections outward from uh, the central the infundibulum? Yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> So it's the other one. <laughs> Which is? Uh, it's one that Blake said. Pincus. <laughs> but Pincus is also <coughs> basically a basis. Yeah. 
So this is a basal <laughs> a pinkus tumor. Pinkus tumors always have sweat ducts in the pink strands. Hmm. Always. They're always there. As opposed to in... Okay. So we're differentiating Infant between... Infundibulocystic radiate cell. outward. Versus These are a. both basal cells that we're discussing. Infundibulocystic okay, so radiates outwards <coughs> with fingers and never has sweat ducts. Pinkus tumor is reticulated and always has sweat ducts. And so I would think if I were giving you a final exam mm -hmm. or a midterm exam during your residency and we're coming up with other possible choices, I might in fact list a whole lot of sweat gland tumors, mm -hmm. right? Um, <laughs> in case you didn't you know, read and know that sweat ducts are normal in a pinkus tumor. Just to confirm, we'd basically be treating the pinkus and the infundibular cystic basal cell the same. We would. Perfect. So um, you would not burn in hell for <laughs> calling it a different type of basal cell. Calling it a benign sweat gland tumor, though, probably wouldn't be good. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Dr. Austin, does the pinkus tumors usually have that, like, fibrous surround, surrounding? It does. So a fibromyxoid stroma, and it the reticulated pattern traps large myxoid areas and areas of fibromyxoid stroma. Um, so that that's all characteristic for for pinkus tumor. Let's see. So you said the words, we are in a sweat gland differential. I see ducts. Okay. Sweat gland tumors are usually what color with ducts? I guess pink. Pink. pink with and blue with duct is usually? Oh, okay. Sebaceous. Sebaceous, correct. So at scan, if you have a big nodule that's pink with white round ducts, it's usually sweat gland, usually acrospiroma. If it's a big blue nodule with ducts, especially red ducts and a blue nodule, it's typically sebaceous. Okay. And in fact, up here, even at scan, you can see your sebacytes, right? I can't see those at scan, but I believe that you can put them in there. So <laughs> you can see that there are <laughs> paler cells in with now the Now I think of them. This oh, is from, there we go. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so a lot of this is scan diagnosis. So red, red ducts, blue tumor, sebaceous. Okay. Pink tumor with ducts, acrospiroma. Okay. Just see the sebaceous. And then this one has a high mitotic rate in areas of necrosis. So sebaceous carcinoma. <coughs> so have a um, kind of pinkish uh, ball in the dermis with it looks like maybe some lymphocytes and so it's is it pink because of cytoplasm or is it pink because of basement membrane zone? Basement membrane zone. So this way. basement membrane zone that's pink, right. the cells themselves, do they have much of any cytoplasm? No, not that I can tell. And they come in two shades. There are darker right. gray ones like to the periphery, cylindrum. paler gray ones to the center. And it's ball-like, not jigsaw puzzle-like, and it's inflamed, peppered with jet black lymphocytes. Oh, spiradenoma. So spiradenoma. And then tell me about 
this area where the cells are a little more atypical. High grade with yeah. lots of mitoses. <laughs> spiradnocarcinoma. Spiradnocarcinoma, correct. So spiradnoma <laughs> gone bad. Most of the adnexal carcinomas arise in a long standing adnexal neoplasm. <laughs> Um, yeah, I usually think of it. It depends how much base membrane zone there is. The cells are blue. The base membrane zone is pink. So the so the, I guess I associated base membrane zone with cylindroma, but that's wrong. It's spir. Um, What's wrong with that? So spiradinoma and cylindroma are closely related. Right. Both have pale and darker gray cells. Right. Cylindroma is in a jigsaw puzzle pattern and not inflamed. Spiradinoma is a ball and peppered with lymphocytes. Okay, so you have to look for lymphocytes. Yeah. Punched by it, so you would say there's a dense superficial lymphoid infiltrates. Uh, <coughs> okay. A regular acanthosis. Looks like some area don't say it's kind of focally lichenoid, maybe. Or okay. I mean, it's not a lot of lichenoid gene. Um, so there's definitely some pigment in the epidermis, but it looks more keratinocytic pigment. Um, so tell me how acute or chronic the process is. So let's see, I think you're pointing to kind of a five, the um, thickening of the basement membrane. Just kind of I'm not sure I see thickening of basement membrane zone. I certainly see collagen bundles. Above the level of the postcapillary venial. So, fibrosis. so there's papillary dermal fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And tell me about the lymphoid infiltrate. I see a vessel there. Yeah, it's all above it. So, you have a bare underbelly. Remember this slide, we're looking at it upside down, right? So, mm -hmm. this is the underside of the vessel up there. So, the you know, the patient is Australian, and the biopsy is shown in true anatomic position, head down, right? Um, and so, but you can see your infiltrate, there's papillary dermal fibro fibrosis, and your infiltrate is distinctly all above the vessel with a bare underbelly below the vessel, makes you think of? Um, mycosis. Mycosis. So it looks like pink, or sorry, blue tumor. And then what are these round, clear things? Sometimes lined with red ducts. So blue tumor, red ducts. What's that <laughs> usually? Mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Sebaceous. <laughs> Sebaceous. And this one is better differentiated, connects to the epidermis, is about half sebacytes, half basaloid cells. Sebaceous adenoma. So sebaceous adenoma. Correct. And that one is sometimes associated with? Mutory. And what do people with Miratori get? KAs and then GI malignancy. GI malignancy and keratory canthalamus. Very good. And is allelic to hereditary non polyposis gut carcinoma. Shave looking pretty normal at scan. Maybe just a little bit of a subacute corneum. Yeah, and the corneum a little bit thick, right? You know, significantly thicker than the epidermis. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say the corneum epidermis looks pretty thick. And so anytime you see that, you're going to look for a fungi in the horn, especially if you have a layered corneum. Mm -hmm. 
not particularly seeing fungi in the horn. So, you know, things like a macular seb would be in the differential. <laughs> is that like a courtesy? It's a great test question. Mm. By control or? <laughs> I'm thinking. Um, I'm thinking it's, oh, it's this flip, flip, normal flip skin. Flip. Oh, that little um, mounds. Flagels. Of flagels. Yeah. So <laughs> tell me about flagels and what's missing for flagels that you're supposed to have histologically. Oh man. So Can flagels is sort of like a macular seb, which is what we're saying. But what is? And it's autosomal dominant, but what's always there in flagels that is not here whatsoever in this specimen? So lichenoid lymphoid infiltrate in flagels, that's always there. It's a defining characteristic, and it's not here in this case, so I wouldn't call this flagels. I mean, it was obviously contributed as that, but <laughs> you, know, you, you can't right. really call it that. <laughs> the non-lymphoid flagels? The, the, the non-lymphoid flagels, I, I suppose. Um, Classic. Maybe last year. Classic 40s. <laughs> Okay, so Brian, since that one really was a non-event, how about this? <laughs> so it looks like I um, have some fibrin within the vessels um, superficially. Yeah, so, so there, that's either fibrin or just heme. Okay. <coughs> um, let's see. So it's a fine perivascular infiltrate. Yep. A lot of junk in the corneum. A lot of junk in the corneum. So what kind of junk in the corneum? It's like little newts. So um, there are newts in the horn. That gives mm -hmm. you a differential of? Newts in the horn would be um, your PTEX differential. Which stands for? Uh, psoriasis, tinea, impentigo, candida, um, syphilis, and septum. Yep. <coughs> and then what else is in the... Mm -hmm. There's a little hyphae. Yeah, it's a little hyphae and what kind of vertically vertical suggesting that they are Is that Canada? Candida. <coughs> so remember Tinea swims, Candida dives. Right? So Tinea tends to be horizontal right above the granular layer, Candida tends to be vertical, so Tinea swims, Candida dives. Differential lips. I'll remember that. Right. I'll see. Uh, <laughs> 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 this thing's uh, thermal humor here. It looks uh, at least like. Sebaceous yeah. So sebaceous, so it's blue everywhere that it's not clear, and you can see ducts. So I'd say it's <laughs> blue tumor with ducts and then clear cells that look like sebacites, uh, well differentiated or poorly differentiated. I think pretty well differentiated. Pretty well differentiated, so it probably falls into the sebacioma. Um, sebaceomas are blue balls with red ducts. This okay. is more adenoma okay, so looking. Adenoma. And um, sebaceous adenoma associated with? Uh -huh. <laughs> what do they get? You get KAs and um, uh, GI. Yep. So gut cancer and keratoid cathomas, allelic to hereditary non polyposis gut carcinoma. And what do people with Cowden's get? Cowden's get uh, breast, gorger, <coughs> and. Um, and GI polyps, not GI cancer. Okay. So benign hematomatous polyps in the gut, um, oral cobblestoning of the oral mucosa, breast cancer, goiter. And what do people with Berthog-Dubay get? <laughs> and you know what type? 
Oncocytoma. Uh, lumpy, bumpy face with oncocytoma, and who gets renal papillary carcinoma? Well, what cutaneous tumor-associated syndrome? Uh, Reeds, fumarate hydratase, and what do they present with? Lyomyomas. So cutaneous, multiple cutaneous lyomyomas, uterine lyomyomas, renal papillary carcinoma, familial. All you know, relevant to the patient and their families. So. I'm not sure if there's some serum crust in there. And then there's certainly something going on in the epidermis. Um, it's multifocal, kind of looks clonal. And um, I don't think <coughs> it's just going in side two. Um, trying to get out the door. Oh, that almost um, looks uh, viral, although it's too low. Okay, so it looks atypical. It's got a little bit of palisade. Um, I think it would it would go into the pagetoid differential. So pagetoid intrapedermal malignant neoplasm, and is your parakeratosis normal or is it large and hyperchromatic? It's pretty large, hyperchromatic. Suggests that it's arising from those cells, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you think? So maybe more pageants. So, um, so the cells does pageants cornify? No. Or is Bowen's more likely to? So more likely Bowen. So would you like to revise your earlier yeah. statement? I don't think this <laughs> is going to solve carcinoma in I think now I'll take a second look. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's right. Bowen's, and you know the reason this is in a study set is you have to go through your pagetoid intrapedermal malignancy. Differential is it Paget's? Is it Bowen's? One of the helpful clues: um, Bowen's may or may not cross a, crush a basal layer. Paget's almost always crushes a basal layer. Here, there was no basal layer crush. Um, Paget's atypical cells can spit out, but they don't keratinize. Whereas here, you have flat keratinizing parakeratosis that's large and hyperchromatic. Is that like amphipoid color? Do you guess that's HPV related at all? Or can you correlate that? Um, not really. There was hypergranulosis in the amphiphilic blue, and that was almost certainly HPV associated. Yeah, absolutely. Great catch. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be a great drug test. Give him some Gardasil. Too late. Already got it. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Too late is true. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> Too down with it. Dermacents are all, we're just all going through the nine now. Mm -hmm. Gardasil yeah. nine, mm -hmm. non-availing. Are we? Oh. Last one in January. <laughs> Great deal. Oh, I think it's only $38. $38 really? shot, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've got lymphoma papillomatosis. You never know what you're hiding. Yeah. Well, that's for the hypothesis. James doesn't even use a mask anymore. <laughs> 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 Actually, there have been dermatologists who got laryngeal papillomatosis okay. from um, treating HPV 11. So, you know, having some immunity to that is not such a bad thing. We're a smart group of people over here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you definitely have irregular acanthosis and hyperplasia. I think in the center that might actually be pseudoepithelioma's hyperplasia. So that's the question. You know, is it squame? Is it keratoacanthoma? Is it pseudoepithelioma's hyperplasia? You're favoring PEH. Yeah, just because the cell, it's not blue enough. Yeah. For me to worry about something. And the rest of it. It has um, a mixed infiltrate, but lots of EOs. Lots of EOs in your endothelium? It is very swollen, so I'd be more on the, like, arthropod. Yeah, whole thing's a bug bite with PEH. Very good.
Mm-hmm. Looks sebaceous. So sebaceous adenoma, if it's immature, if it's pretty mature, but just in the wrong place, like sebaceous glands like this on your lip would be... Like in topics. Um, like, so Montgomery, or not Montgomery, but... Fordyce. So Montgomery are areola, Tyson's are <coughs> penis or vulva, Fordyce oral. So, you know, just all the various ectopic <coughs> sebaceous glands. Okay. This one I'm just going to show you because it kind of fits into that spectrum. Actually, this is a good fellow case. Uh, <laughs> Justin, what do you think? <laughs> well, the sebaceous gland. Uh, yeah. Or the sebaceous modules in there. And where are they? They're clonal within the epidermis. Yeah. And um, in areas, um, there's an anastomosing pattern. So do you know any reticulated acanthoma with sebaceous differentiation? As descriptive as it sounds, the name of the entity is reticulated acanthoma with sebaceous differentiation. It basically looks like a sebaceous seb, um, intraepidermal sebaceous. It is, it's a clonal proliferation, intraepidermal, but they're sebaceous glands, called reticulated acanthoma with sebaceous differentiation, and to date, not associated with any syndrome. So just a totally just a benign, <laughs> it's a bump. Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how about this one? So it definitely has some apocrine snouting. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a simple cyst. It it's not uh, papillary at all, like an H pap. Really, mm-hmm. it's enfolded a little bit. What if that were just one or two cells thick? What would you call it? Um, like a hydrocystoma. Like a hydrocystoma. So, do you know any kind of cyst adenoma? <laughs> Cyst adenoma. So <laughs> cyst adenomas are like hydrocystomas becoming a little more adenomatous. Mm. Um, but Nicole, if you saw something similar to this but on an eyelid, what would you think? I would be worried about the neuroendocrine mucin producing. Yeah. So endocrine mucin producing carcinoma of the eyelid, which begins <laughs> as a hydrocystoma, ends as mucinous carcinoma, and along the way looks like cyst adenoma. And the hint is synaptophysin positive. So if this is somewhere on your trunk or neck or hand, it's a benign cystatinoma. If it's on your eyelid, it's probably malignant. You know, on its way to mucinous <coughs> carcinoma. So it's infiltrative, kind of like a squame. But it has kind of a eyeliner weight appearance in it places. And they are, what color are the cells? Uh, pretty much everything I see is in the shades of pink. <laughs> <laughs> if you okay. repeat that, I'm not capable of <laughs> I, I'd say pale and glycogenated. Okay. With a, distinct, <laughs> with a distinct peripheral palisade and a glassy basin membrane zone. Hmm. So, what would be pink and glycogenated hanging off the epidermis with a distinct peripheral palisade and a um, glassy basin membrane zone? 
Like a clear cell acanthoma, but I don't picture those being. So a clear cell acanthoma hangs off the epidermis, or is the epidermis? It just is. <laughs> and is this the epidermis, or is this hanging down from the epidermis? I would technically answer both, but I, I understand you're favoring hanging. And so something that hangs off the epidermis, clear, glycogenated, peripheral palisade. I just triculomoma. Triculomoma, but you said it is in infiltrative. Trichelema like carcinoma. Trichelema <laughs> carcinoma. <laughs> Very good. And we're That's just pretty hard for me. Okay. That was right on the power of you diagnosis, correct? <laughs> <laughs>